Joining us to talk more about it is Brian Nagel. He is senior equity research analyst at Oppenheimer. And, and Brian, what's your immediate reaction to, to some of this news? Well, good morning, Becky. Look, I think you summed it, summed it up well. I mean, it's, it's very similar to what we heard from Home Depot a week ago, okay? And so if you look at these Lowe's numbers, they did beat on the bottom line. You know, I think that's reflective of the company operating better. We talk a lot on your show. Marvin Ellison, the CEO, you know, is really running this business better than it's been run historically. And we're seeing on the bottom line, but the sales were weak. You know, the, with comps down, you'll know, call four percent just to make it simple. You know, that's definitely softer than most people were expecting. Now, it, but it's also very consistent with what Home Depot said. Uh, you know, they did call out, like you said, they called out in their press release the the headwinds, if you will, of uh, lumber price deflation and uh, unfavorable weather. Now, those factors are transitory. OK, I, you know, I very much, especially weather, you know, weather is actually starting to turn pretty nice across the country. So I expect. Do you believe, the, do you believe the weather? I mean, some, sometimes we look at that as an excuse. You're hearing it from more than one company. But was weather a, an issue for the quarter? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's, it's undoubted. It, it, there's, there's really no question there at all. You had, you know, a, a late start to spring really across the country. And then this is what Home Depot was talking about, among others. In, in, in the western part of the country, particularly California, you had a really harsh winter, which is which is rare, that either delayed projects, canceled projects, or, or delayed the start of uh, kind of spring buying. So that's it's absolutely real, and I, and I think it's transitory. They they talk about lower do-it-yourself discretionary sales. Now maybe some of that's delayed. Maybe some of it's just the consumer is feeling weakness. What what do you think, having looked at some of these big box retailers? In, in terms of how the overall economy is doing? Well, look, it's a great question. I mean, and that's the wild card here. Okay, so we, you know, we, and I, I was talking to Home Depot a lot uh, you know, last week following their report on this exact topic, and you really don't know. You know so, yes, they're seeing weaker, you know, and I think this is what Lowe's is saying as well, there's weaker demand for bigger ticket projects. Okay, so could that be a more cautious consumer? Absolutely. Could it be weather? Absolutely. And then there's also, and I think this is probably the most likely factor, you know, we've talked about this a lot. Through the pandemic, a lot of projects were done. You know, we, we were spending a lot of time at home. We were not traveling. We did a lot of projects as, as, a, as, a, as a community, so to say. And I think you're getting this burn off now. I think a lot of those projects have been completed, so you're seeing the after effects of that. But it's really not totally clear as to exa exactly why this is all happening. But clearly there's a weaker trend here. The company says that they are optimistic about their ability to steal market share. Lowe's says this. Um, what do you think between Lowe's versus Home Depot? Well, you know, look, we like them both. I think given the valuations here, and I talk about this a lot, I mean, Lowe's stock, in my mind, is just cheap, for lack of a better term. It's absolutely cheap. So I, I think Lowe's is probably the better investment opportunity. But as far on the market share side, and again, I see this across retail. Right. This has been the case for a while. I think post pandemic, it's more the case. These really well run, strong, digitally driven, digitally enabled companies like Lowe's, like Home Depot are able to take market share from the weaker players. And, and you know, as once we get through this, whatever we're in, this kind of this sluggishness, this messiness, 2024, 2025, I think we'll see a much clearer path to companies like Lowe's taking more market share. And I think that, look, that's the reason you want to buy these stocks. I think that's that's the real opportunity and called the intermediate term. We were just talking this morning about how the two-year tenure, the inverted yield curve has been signaling a recession, but it's been signaling that since July of last year. That's a long time coming. Once we get through this, are we looking at a recession? Well, you know, I, look, I, I, I joke with my clients. I'm not an economist, but I've had a, the recession conversation with clients a lot for a long time. You know, and I think really that comes down to, and some of my economist friends will probably be bothered when I say this, but it's, what do we mean by recession? You know, if you look at Home Depot and Lowe's, okay, and, 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 and over the last several quarters, you know, very simplistically, sales growth has gone from plus 30% to down five. Okay, that in and of itself to me is recession. It's not recession, the traditional uh, definition, but it's a recession. So again, the point I'm making was is- Was it a recession I look at, or was it just all the sales got pulled forward? Well, that's, I think there's a big piece of that, but I think that's you know, that that change in growth rate, plus 30, negative five, would in and of itself, that's definitely a slowdown. Now, the negative five is on you know, a still much higher base. You know, the, the lows, today's lows, I'm using lows as an example, lows sales are much higher than they were historically, so that, you know, that slower growth rate's happening on a higher base. But, you know, that change in growth rate would in and of itself be recession-like, but this is a very different dynamic coming out of the pandemic.
Well, let's just talk about how long that lasts. If, if you're talking about still being on a higher base, how long will it be before you see growth like that again? Or, or will you ever see growth like that? You know, it took a recession. It took a, a crazy pandemic to, to, to get those kind of growth numbers that we saw before. Yeah, look, I don't mean, I, I don't think we'll ever see, you know, plus 30 percent growth within the home improvement channel again. That was that was a unique event. But uh, I think the better way to answer the question is, you know, right now we're in this kind of down low, down mid single digit type dynamic. I think as we look out to 24, 2024, 2025, we get back to normalize, we, we you know, track towards normalized growth rates. And for this sector, that's plus low to plus mid single digits. You know, I think we're you know, at least still, still a few, maybe several quarters away from getting back to that normalized dynamic.